my bike's gonna complete 10,000 kilometers in about 7-8 minutes. What better time to go ahead and do a long term review of the Dominar 400, rather my Dominar 400. As with my 5000 km review, we will again split this video into three parts. The first two are the goods and what can be improved and the last part we will go to talk about money. How much money has this bike costed me? Alright, so let's go ahead and get started. Out of the 10,000 kilometers, my total mileage in city limits would be somewhere around 600 to 700, 800 max because yeah, this time before the K2K ride, I was roaming around here and there in the city getting things done for the bike. 90% or rather 93% of the running of this bike has been for touring. I have made modifications that suit my touring needs so since the last video that you saw a 5000 km review the changes now include ace of his uh, knuckle guards this this is a molded one again aluminum inside other than that um, these are the ones that I have installed the fog lamps have been installed for the Leh Ladakh right or the K2K right uh, along with uh, changes to the tires uh, for this ride I wanted to go do a full off-road uh, tire setup at least so this time I wanted to keep the bike ready so that you know whenever I feel like I need to climb a certain hill or something I should be able to do that with ease or uh, things can be improved remain the same uh, big big thing is uh, the fuel tank capacity uh, other than that uh, vibrations I have no complaints about vibrations I have switched to Shell Advanced Ultra fully synthetic engine oil and uh, it has helped a lot uh, when it comes to reducing vibrations uh, even it has reduced since my last ride and my bike is pretty much thrashed WOT all the time and uh, still I am happy with it uh, one more thing I want to talk about the Shell Advanced Ultra is uh, from the limited knowledge that I have uh, even for these engines, even though they are liquid cooled, the engine oil still plays a very important part in heat dissipation. And uh, in Mumbai or uh, near that uh, Bhivandi Thane uh, section of Mumbai, on one of these days, this bike was stuck in traffic for about three to four hours. Most of the time on half clutch, first and second gear, short bursts, and. Uh, I actually thought this bike will heat up enormously. The bike did not heat up at all. Credit goes to the way this bike's engine is designed, along with uh, engine oil as well. Whoa! Nine, 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 nine. Right. Let's give it a minute. Two, two. Whoa! So we have hit 10,000. All right. Yeah. This bike has done what uh, a normal or average Indian does probably in an year this bike has done in about three months time see four months time I got the bike on my birthday on March 1st and today is I think July something so in about four months the bike has done 10,000 kilometers out of which the last 3,400 kilometers uh, have been done in a span of less than 10 days day in and day out riding um, non-stop the bike is confidence inspiring otherwise I would not have chosen this particular bike to uh, go do a K2K a ride like a K2K this bike is very forgiving today itself I was entering a corner carrying in too much of speed mid corner I, re I realized that I'm carrying in too much speed a little dab on the front brakes and the bike sorted itself out I had scarier moments than this than that uh, on the KTM because uh, KTM is not a very forgiving bike you make a mistake it will kill you that's actually the you know thrill of it and I would love to own a KTM someday maybe very soon I don't know yet but yeah so there, there are 
two bikes on my radar uh, that should complete my garage uh, that way I'll have my, th my Thunderbird that's a classic bike I will go to go do all the Royal Enfield meetups etc etc on that Oops. Uh, and do grocery shopping this bike is no not at all suitable for grocery shopping at all uh, especially in my setup I don't even have a place to hang grocery bags that is a big negative point if you are planning to do grocery shopping don't buy this bike uh, after changing the tires to the Ralco the ride height has, ride height has increased by probably an inch that uh, helps uh, increase the ground clearance as well uh, but I'm not very happy with the performance of the Ralcos unfortunately we Indians uh, don't have a lot of choices when it comes to dual purpose tires but uh, at the end of the my uh, at the end of my ride, I will go and uh, switch back to my uh, MRF or FC1. I think they are a decent compromise between on-road ability and uh, mild off-road ability, like Bangalore type off-road ability. Last but uh, not the least is the costs. So my third service was done yesterday in Udaipur. Uh, service cost I think was some 450 or 600 bucks. Uh, oil was already changed. My overall cost for this bike, uh, let alone the fuel expenses, uh, has been, I'm just calculating, about 3000 to 3500 rupees for 10,000 kilometers. Uh, tires don't, I don't consider them as cost because uh, that is not a regular uh, item. I mean, the stock tires would have lasted. Uh, but uh, I had to change them. So if you add, add, you know, the depreciation of the stock tires, so I would say the total cost uh, has been around five thousand rupees so far uh, for this entire duration. Out of the five thousand rupees, uh, about uh, three thousand rupees for oil. No, two oil changes, three thousand rupees, and uh, rest is all mis miscellaneous expenses. Uh, Fuel cost, I am averaging on this ride, uh, if I maintain speeds like this, like double digit speeds, then I am averaging about 29 to 30 even with these broad tires. Um, if I am maintaining triple digit speeds, uh, my I average, for this I am just speaking about this ride, so my average drops down to about probably 24-25 km a litre and uh, overall, uh, Till yesterday, I had spent uh, about thirty chain thousand rupees on fuel. So that works out to roughly about not thirty. I think twenty six, twenty six thousand rupees change uh, so far. So that roughly works about about two point six rupees a kilometer. Uh, you do the maths uh, because yeah, I mean. If you average out fuel cost 2.6 rupees a kilometer, so uh, net net uh, it's about uh, 3 rupees. You know, the total running cost of this bike is about uh, 3 rupees a 3 rupees a kilometer, 3 or 3.1 rupees a kilometer, which is a lot of bang for your buck when it uh, when you compare what this bike is capable of. Uh, similar 300 cc bike from another manufacturer the running costs are probably twice or two and a half times the running cost of this bike looking back at those 10,000 kilometers this bike has taken me places you should see all those places flashing on the screen probably right about now I had kind of taken a break from touring and I started touring a little bit uh, once I moved to Mangalore on my Thunderbird for probably a ride a month but with this I mean I am full on full on touring mode and the reason of that what do I have to think like 700 kilometers a day oh my god that's too much of a distance it will take me about 14-15 hours to cover and talking about you know South Indian highways the like Indian highways on the southern side of India how the the way they are you know how it is right so 
However, with this, a 700 km round trip would probably be done in about 10 hours of riding time. That's what this bike is capable of. And uh, what the plans for this bike next? So yes, so uh, this is the dirt or dual sport setup that my bike currently is in. Uh, after I am back from the Ladakh ride, the setup will change again. I will go back to school. If you can take the hint, then you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, that's that's a short, sweet, and crisp review of my lovely Dominar 400, who I love lovingly or fondly call Jagadaku. Uh, I hope this video helps you. Uh, if you are a prospective Dominar owner, this will help you to understand uh, how this bike will behave, perform uh, over a uh, longer period of time. Uh, if you are already a Dominar owner, you know what to expect. And uh, if you are neither, neither. Thank you for watching till now. Alright, so do smash that like button and uh, do subscribe to my channel if you have not subscribed to my channel. And uh, do let me know in the comment section below like what else you would want to know about uh, the bike, my trips. And that's about it. So cheers folks. Now that we have arrived at a toll gate, it's time for me to end the 10,000 km review of Dominar 400. Thank you. Cheers. Bye bye.